my staff. Get my girl on line one. Oh, I don't have a girl. No wonder this got all screwed up. Hi, it's me again. You've clicked on my blog, www.LarryTheWineGuy.net, and I am Larry the Wine Guy. But I don't see any wine here. I can understand the screw up. I've got a bunch of Mazzola canola oil and Pam. Guess I was uh, preparing to do a show on Greece. And I forgot all about it because everybody just thinks there's no wine in Greece. And that's what I want to try to dispel, so I put out Greece. Yeah, but get rid of this junk. <laughs> let's, let's do a wine show. And uh, I know for most people, it's Greek to you. And I'm going to try to dispel that. Most people, when they think of Greek wine, they only think of Retsina. Retsina is the bad R word. People think that uh, if you've ever tasted a Retina, I have yet to taste a good one. I've heard there are good ones out there, but the ones available to us taste like gasoline. So people hear Greek wines, they think of only possibly having them at Greek restaurants, and uh, they don't think about anywhere else uh, that you can get that because even big 31,000 square feet stores don't have... Uh, a good selection of Greek wines. They've got the Butari line, which is considered the low, low, inexpensive end of Greek wine. That's not Greek wine. I mean, how many people have had a Spruti or a Sirtiko or a Zinamavro, uh, grape varietals that are indigenous to Greece? This is not something you can pick up in Napa Valley on a wine tour. These are grapes that have been growing for thousands of years and indigenous to that country, and they don't have to be applied to just Greek food. They go great with all types of food like other countries' wines of Italian, certainly better than a Pinot Grigio that some people pay um, $14 a glass. I will not mention any names. <clears throat> Santa Margarita. And... Um, things like that, and uh, they, they, it's just definitely a country that needs to be, the, the mystique behind it needs to be dispelled. I was first introduced to the wines of the beautiful country of Greece when I worked at another, another concept down in um, Miami as a wine buyer, and uh, two, and two importers, uh, husband and wife, uh, Lukas and Katina Lukakis, Lukas Lukakis, and I have a doctor named George Georgiakakis, and you wonder why people don't know anything about Greek wines. Who could pronounce any of this stuff? I think I'm, I'm going to change my name to uh, Larry Larry Kakis. And, uh, but anyway, they're wonderful people. They just had a hard time, difficult time getting this Greek message out there. I took in over 25, 30 wines um, from them, uh, and they were wonderful. People were buying it. Once you get to learn and not be so afraid and have Greekophobia, you... Uh, you will be wonderfully in love with Greek wine. Now the hard part is, is going to find it. Uh, where are you going to find it? Uh, Lukas and uh, Katina have formed their own import uh, supplier company called Heirloom Vines Incorporated. And they're going to bring these Greek wines in. I've met some wonderful winemakers in the past who are going to deal with those same wine producers. Uh, Alexander Megapanos, whose wines we're going to taste today. Uh, Batistas and Hagli Pavlu. Uh, all great wines. I know this doesn't mean anything to you unless you've gone to some fine dining Greek restaurants where how many are those? I know Kima in Atlanta, if you live in uh, Buckhead, is wonderful and they carry a lot of those wines. But uh, let's dispel some of the myth. Uh, we're going to start off with a white wine from uh, the, uh, it's called Saviatano. Uh, Saviatano, Savati wait, Savatiano, right, Savatiano. I can't see, it's Greek to me too, so don't be ashamed. Sabatiano by Alexander Megapanos is made in the Attica region. Attica! Attica! Attica. I love that Al Pacino movie, Dog Day Afternoon, I can't help but say it. But uh, uh, Sabatiano comes from Attica, which is in the, uh, in, in the central part of Greece, right near Athens, and um, that's where they make this great uh, varietal that's indigenous to the area, a regional wine of Spata. Uh, it's uh, alcohol percentage is 12% by volume. Let's pour it. See what we got here. First of all, on the color, nice uh, light yellow straw color, just like you see on many Italian crisp uh, whites, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc kind of color, Pinot Grigio colors. Why do I hate that word, Pinot Grigio? That one brand we mentioned has given a bad name to a wonderful grape, unfortunately. Marketing. 
Sorry, Tony Trilato, but that wine is horrible. Wow, beautiful freshness and floral quality to this uh, grape Sabatiano. Um, lots of uh, fresh pressed apples here. I'm getting apples, I'm getting floral, I'm getting a little honeyed flavor to it or a nose on the palate. Let's see what we got on the palate. Citrus, lots of tin, a little white pepper spice, mm. Great, beautiful minerality on the mid palate to it, good acidity. I like that, uh, very lemony, lemony, a little bit of a fresh lemon zest into this. So uh, we have a nice, crisp white wine that would be great, of course, with some of the Greek mezes, a great with a tzatziki, garlicky, cucumber, yogurt. Uh, sauce that you dip some pita bread in, but also great with other things that aren't Greek. Of course, octopus, uh, I don't want to leave that out. One of my favorite things that on a Greek meses or appetizer small plate menu is a grilled octopus. Everybody makes it different. And uh, I love. I would love that with this, but I would also love this with some uh, uh, raw oysters, some shrimp cocktail, some uh, crab lump of crab meat or uh, anything like that, or by itself as an aperitif. This is a really nice crisp uh, wine. Is it the most uh, complex white wine I've ever had? No, I'm going to score it. Um, let's go 86 points on this wine. I think it's definitely a buy if it's in the retail value of 11, 12, 12.99, 13.99 for this wine. Uh, I would say this would be definitely a buy, um, and it's definitely well-made wine. Uh, a good starting point uh, to taste Greek wine. Uh, Sabatiano, try asking for that, hopefully soon, uh, with Heirloom Vines uh, back in action uh, with uh, Katina and Lucas uh, uh, promoting these Greek wines. Hopefully we will be able to find availability in your big mega stores or some fine wine shops in your area, uh, especially in South Florida where they're located. Nice wine. Let's move on to one of my favorite Greek varietals that uh, I've tasted before from Hagli Pabu. I have never had from uh, Megapanos. It is the, uh, the, the famous grape of Mantinea in Greece, and it's called Mosco Falero. Mosco Falero. No, it's not a car made by Chevrolet. It is a grape varietal indigenous to Greek. Uh, you can find that one in the Butari line, but it's not 100%. It's a blend. Uh, the Hagli Pablo one, the first time I had that, I was so wowed that Lucas and Katina had invited me to a wine dinner, a Greek wine dinner at DeVito's, Danny DeVito's restaurant, an Italian restaurant in South Beach, Miami, South Beach, Florida. Um, and they, the challenge for the chef was to pair food items from that DeVito's menu with Greek wine. So here we're having Greek wines in an Italian restaurant, and it was paired with Japanese sashimi, yellowtail, hamachi, a slice, big sashimi, uh, thick slices uh, of sashimi with a little bit of jalapeno pepper, like a citrusy sauce. And I had the Hagli Pablo Mosco Falero, which was one of the most unbelievable pairing. Let's see what Alexander Megapanos has to do with this uh, wine called the Mandania from the area that it comes from. And again, 100% varietal, coming in at 11.5% alcohol. I like these lower alcohol wines as opposed to these 14.5%. You know how, how I love those over alcohol wines from California. I like these style of wines. That's what I want from a white wine. I don't want to be drinking high alcohol Prilosec wines uh, that you have to mask with oak. Uh, I like these crisp white wines when I'm drinking a white wine. That's my personal taste when I drink white wine. Mm, this is beautiful. All pears. Lots of pear in this one. Bartlett pear. Apple aromas. I'm noticing the, um, the combination of, on both of these wines, or the commonality uh, between both of these wines, of floral. There's definitely some floral natures to all these wines, and, uh, and a fresh acidity smell. You know you're going to be drinking some fresh citrus and fresh pear and apple uh, notes. Let's have a whirl. So much more complex than the uh, 
than the previous wine. Mm. It's leaving me with a beautiful aftertaste of just fresh squeeze, like a little bit grapefruit, but fresh squeeze lemon, lemon zest, the sweeter part, not the bitter part of the lemon. It definitely had some apple and pear, but mostly a nice citrusy. I would, I would just have shrimp and, forget, and forego the lemon and just squirt a wine like this. I can sip on this wine during the day in the hot climates as an aperitivo or just get me some stone crab claws and mustard sauce uh, or some more of that uh, hamachi uh, or, or any kind of sashimi with a fatty fish and a crisp wine like this or order me up a dozen oysters with a mignonette sauce uh, with that vinegary type taste and have a wine like this. This is a great salad wine too. A lot of people didn't realize that you can't have your Chardonnays with salad. Those heavily oaked wines, once you put vinaigrette dressing or vinegar, which is the basis of most dressing, needs a wine like this. So there you go. Many different pairings that are not Greek food. Um, I really liked it. I like this one better than the Hogli Pabu. Uh, I'm going to go 89 points on this wine. I would pay a, little bit, uh, a lot more money than I would pay for the other one, which was good for its purpose. I'd go as high as... Uh, um, $18.99, under $20. I'd like to keep this at under $20. I don't know what uh, they're going to do, and I'm just here to review the wine. I'm going to go 89 points with this wine. I think it's really, really has uh, some floral, acacia flowers, a little bit of rose petals on the nose. Floral, citrus, beautiful crispness to the wine. This is a great, great Mosco Falero. So much better than the blended Mosco Falero that's in a clear bottle that you see all the time in every supermarket and wine shop with their limited uh, availability. Megapano's great job. We're going red now. We're only doing one red today. Um, that's what I was supplied with. Hint, hint. Let's get some more. <laughs> this is from Alexander Megapanos. I tasted this wine a while back. Uh, this is the 2008 vintage. We're talking serious wine. The problem that I had years ago, we'll see when we taste this with what uh, Mr. Megapanos does with his wine. He's a purist, and he likes to age this wine uh, one, one year, or his red wines in one year, using Greek oak barrels that are indigenous to the area. Uh, most winemakers uh, will use French oak, American oak, Slovenian oak, Hungarian oak. Greek oak, for me, the last time I tasted uh, some of his red wine, I had a problem with it, to be honest with you. I, I didn't think it was well. You couldn't convince. He's a very strong-minded guy. He's going to do things his way, and he doesn't care whether you like the wine as long as he likes the wine. You've got to admire that about uh, Mr. Megapanos. Um, classic wine. I have some autographed bottles from him. Uh, this is from the region of Nemea. Nemea produces a grape varietal that is one of my favorite uh, grape varietals from Greece. I can drink this all day long. I believe Katina, uh, this is one of her favorites. I think she, we have that in common, uh, the importer uh, of this wine. Uh, the grape varietal, get out your pens and papers. You probably will take six years to pronounce it. Worse than uh, Alsatian Gewürztraminer. This is spelled A G. H-I-O-R-G-I-T-I-K-O. Agiotikiko. 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 I love it. Every time I have an Agiotikiko, it is my favorite for those who like Pinot Noir, Shiraz, in that neighborhood. It's like a combination of everything all in one grape. Uh, Carmenier, um, you know, Syrah, Petite Syrah, it's just a, an indigenous varietal. You get more minerality from the volcanic soils in the area, and it's stored for one year in oak barrels, and then one year in the bottles. We're dealing with a 2008 vintage. Uh, this is the big boy here, an Agiotikiko, a Nemea. You'll see that on some Greek wine restaurants. Let's rinse out the glass first. By the way, if you ever do this and you're tasting a bunch of wines, those water pitchers at wine tasting is completely waste of time. It will accomplish nothing except waste water. Um, the only way is to season with the next wine. Ask them for a little rinse, not with water, a rinse of your next wine. You can taste 400 wines. It doesn't matter. It's limitless. And now we're ready to go. We're seasoned with the next wine instead of a bunch of water, which actually screws up the next wine you're going to. Let's pour this Agiortikiko Namia. Uh, in the glass and with Greek oak. Let's see if I have a problem with it still later. He says it really mellows out the wine. I found it gave a funky taste the last time I tasted, but you never know. That's why vintage, everything changes. Maybe he's changed the style, maybe my opinion. And, and I can give you a better opinion of the wine than I did the last time.
first of all, the color. It's 12.5% alcohol, and there's a lot more body. There's really a dark ruby, dark red color on the glass. Really like that. The nose. You don't get vanilla with Greek oak like you do with vanilla and oak. There's actually a, a oak barrel called that. Most people would guess right off the bat, you know, Pinot Noir. Some people might guess Syrah. I think mostly I would guess Pinot Noir if I was tasting it. And I'm a Pinot file, as you know, uh, my Oregon Pinots. Beautiful, fresh berries, uh, fresh black fruit. I mean, red berries, or, you know, like blackberry fruits. A little bit of spice. I'm getting a little bit of the spices on the nose. It's uh, really, really nice. It's typical of what I've tasted before of Nemias, and that's what makes it one of my favorite. Beautiful legs for 12.5% alcohol, those little teardrops running. Mm, little baking spices. Let's have a taste. yummy. That is yummy. Very full body in the mouth for something that only has 12.5% alcohol. It's a nice fruit bomb without being fakeified like California wines. I don't think anybody I would pour this would not believe that this was a Pinot Noir or something out of Oregon or even French Burgundy. I would never guess Greek wine or Agiatikiko. It has a nice black pepper spice to it. Like I said, it's like a cross between a Pinot Noir and a Syrah. And the Greek oak has mellowed out any kind of tannins. And this time, I'm not getting that funky, rotten vegetal taste, that asparagus taste that I got that was imparted by the Greek oak the last time. So I might be a believer now. on the barbecue food, bring on the baby lamb chops. This is delicious. This wine has a long finish. Wow, that to me is a $25 wine. That's a 90 pointer. I'm going to go 90 points on this wine because the finish is left. My entire palate from the mid palate, which is still tingling with flavors of berries and, uh, and spices and rose petals. Mm. And there really is no that's what I like. No bitter tannins to this wine. They're very ripe tannins in the skins of the Agriotikiko grape. And this Greek oak is working for me. The 12 months in age has really softened this wine where it's ready to drink now. I would open it up as I did about an hour in advance. Um, I'm, again, 90 points. This wine is outstanding. I, I really like the 2008 Megapanos uh, uh, Nemea, or as we know, you have your spelling, Agriotikiko. This is just for show. This is one of Lucas's presents to mine a long time ago. There's a wine, a Cyprian wine, that is made by Etco in the, uh, on the island of Cyprus called Commanderia. And it's one of the most wonderful dessert wines that I ever tasted. This is only a couple of hundred bottles come in to the state of Florida or anywhere. It's a very expensive wine. I forgot how long this age, maybe 75 years or a century. It's called Centurion. I've had this bottle since the original bottle, I think from five years ago. There's just a little bit left. I love it. Uh, if you could ever seek something like this or just the regular Commander Rear, you will never drink Port Sherry's Madeira ever again. Uh, this is the bomb of all dessert wines. Whenever I'm sick, Katina uh, always tells me, just have a shot of Commander Rear or the Centurion. Um, I love this. I wish the best of luck to the Heirloom Vines Company. I hope they can get their message across so that we can find these wines and many more from Megapanos, Batistas, and Hogley Pablo back in the shelves because right now I couldn't even tell you a retailer where to find us anywhere in your country. You could look on their website, uh, megapanos.gr uh, for Greece, uh, and you can maybe see where these vines are, wines are located. Uh, in your area of the country. Um, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope 
that it's taken out some of the mystery just a little bit. We're going to do more shows on Greek wine to understand that you should seek out Get your retailer to order some Greek wines in your area because you're missing out. And if you go to a Greek restaurant, try an Agriotiki coat. Try some tapas, light tapas or a grilled octopus or some shrimp saganaki, which is with flaming cheese. And have one of these, uh, have a great Mosco Falero or a Sabatiano with those wines to start out with. And finish up your meal with some Commanderia uh, by dessert. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this show. I've enjoyed reviewing these wines, and I look forward to doing more Greek wine. So it's not Greek to you. It's not just Ritzina. Until I see you next time, right here on my blog, via through video, or through my writings every couple of days, uh, uh, I want to thank you for joining. And remember, wine is not for snobs. It's for everyday people like me, you, Lukas Lukakis, Larry Lukakis, Dr. George Georgiakakis, everyday people like you and me, okay? This is www.larrythewineguy.net and have yourself a great day. And as we say, 